Okay, let me show you how this works real quick. So just as an example, I've got a uh, two inputs here, and this is the one we're working with. And if I start typing, you can see some search results show up. And if I click on one, it updates the input. Okay, so how does this work? Let me show you. I've got one API endpoint for Teams, and I've got a query string parameter here that's the query to search for um, from that endpoint. And you can see what it's returning, just a list of Teams. And then I have two screen variables that are most that we're working with here search results which is going to be the results from that api endpoint that we just looked at and the team input which is associated with the text input that we're working with so this one's an object array no default value this one's a team and uh team input uh, string no no default value um Okay, and so the next thing we're going to move down to is we've got this team input. Let me clear this out. Um, okay, so the first thing on the team input is on change text. We are setting the team input variable to the new team value. So this is just updating that team input variable to whatever the new value is that we have typed in to the input. And then on change text delayed is where we're doing the API requests. So after the um, debounce time, it will trigger the API request. So we'll hit that endpoint and we're going to give it a name to that result suggestions. And we're passing in the value of whatever's in the text input, the new value to that query string parameter and then returning the results. Then we've got an if else here, and I'm just checking to see if the team input length is greater than zero. So if we actually have a value in the text input, we're going to set those search results, that search result variable to whatever the suggestions that were returned from this API request are. Otherwise, we're going to return an empty array because we don't have a value in the input, we're do not doing any searching, and we don't want to display our list. Um, so we'll give it an empty value. Okay, so next we've got this suggestions, and this is the actual drop down. It's uh, a view with a list inside and some touchable items for each each listing or each list item. So here I've got some styling options. The main ones that you're going to want to be concerned with are this width 100%. And that's important because we're going to be setting the position down here to absolute. So we want to stretch the width of our uh, suggestions box to the same width of the parent container that these uh, other components are using so that it goes full width. And then I've got a max height 200, which will let it expand in height depending on the amount of search results but only to a certain like reasonable height so i've got it 200 there and then absolute positioning will make the suggestions not show up in line with these three items so if we didn't have absolute set once we display this suggestions it would show up between these two inputs pushing this email input down below the list and that's not what we want we want the suggestions to like be a drop down that shows up above that um, so we're going to set that to absolute and then the z index will actually make the list appear above like on top of if we didn't have the z index then it would be it would not be taking up space in the layout but it would show up behind this input so you would have this input and then behind it you would have the drop down so the z index makes sure that the drop down is above this uh, other input and then i just have some border radius and again we can take a look at that just real quick so you can see what we just did 
you can see that this pop-up is showing up above that input, right? So um, those are some important styling right here, the position and Z index and the width and uh, height. So uh, on the suggestions also, we're going to conditionally display it. So I've got search results. I'm taking those search results and I'm getting the first item in the search results and I'm checking to see if the name of that item is not equal to whatever's in the text input, then we don't want to show it. So basically that's saying like if we already have marketing in here, we don't actually want to show marketing. In this case, it's going to have to be case sensitive. But you can see here if I have it marketing it doesn't show us marketing because we're we've already got marketing completed but as soon as it's not an exact match then it shows up okay so that's how we conditionally display the the actual whole drop down and then my list is getting past that variable of search results and not doing anything else and then the last thing is this touchable, which wraps each of those list items. And whenever we press on that, we're just updating this team input screen variable to the name of the list item. So whatever the list item is that shows up, each of these items in the list has a, a name and an ID associated with it. So whenever we click on it, we're going to grab that name and assign it to the same variable associated with the text input. So um, yeah, that's basically it. You'll need to adapt it, obviously, the API request and all that. Um, but functionally, this is how it can work.